Grace and peace to you and yours in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and welcome to Cedar Creek United Methodist Church, a church that is light, life, and love in our community, which is growing, serving, and loving all in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, my name is Pastor Chris Beisline. I'm so glad you're joining us in praise and worship today. As always, we appreciate you liking this recording on YouTube and on Facebook, and then sharing it with your friends, as this is one way we're building our online community of faith. And as we prepare to worship, light your candle in your sacred space as we have already lit our candles in this holy space. Make yourself comfortable as we settle in for worship today. Now breathe in and breathe out. Let's center ourselves for worship on this Trinity Sunday as we are reminded that God reveals God's self to us in many different ways. In today's lesson, we hear that a man named Nicodemus, who was astute in the law of Moses, discovered God at work in a teacher from Nazareth. We'll hear that famous verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Friends, please pray with me. You are holy, O Lord, our creator and God, giving us mercies beyond number. You are holy, O Savior, Jesus Christ, loving and setting us free. You are holy, O Spirit of truth and peace, leading us in ways that are right. O holy, eternal Trinity, we praise you forever and ever. Amen. And now let's worship the Lord. Oh God, how I need 
In the Bible today, we learn about a man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus late one night because he was hungry. No, he wasn't looking for a late night snack. He was hungry for spiritual food. He was hungry about the kingdom of God and the truth behind it. He came to Jesus because he had questions and he knew that Jesus would have the answers. Nicodemus reminds me of the very hungry caterpillar. In Eric Carle's book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, the story begins with a tiny egg on a leaf in the light of the moon. And on a Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a very small and very hungry caterpillar. And he began to eat and eat and eat, but he was still hungry. And finally, he had eaten so much that he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. And the caterpillar ate through a nice green leaf, and his stomach felt much better. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself and stayed there for more than two weeks. And then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and pushed his way out. And guess what? He wasn't a caterpillar anymore. He was now a beautiful butterfly. Isn't that a wonderful story? The very hungry caterpillar reminds me of what Jesus said to Nicodemus. I think the very hungry caterpillar could help Nicodemus understand what Jesus said. Nicodemus said to Jesus, Teacher, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. No one could, could perform the miracles that you are doing if God were not with him. And then Jesus said something so amazing and confusing for Nicodemus. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can a man be born again? And Jesus went on to explain to Nicodemus that a person is born again when the Spirit of God enters into his heart. Humans can reproduce human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. And that's what it means to be born again. So let's think about the story of the very hungry caterpillar. When he came out of his cocoon, he was a totally new creation, a butterfly. That's the way it is when we are born again and let Jesus come into our heart. He makes us a new creation. Let's pray. Dear God, we praise you that in Jesus we are a new creation, that the old has gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take these shackles off my feet so I can dance. Just want to praise you. Just want to praise you, Lord. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. Oh, gonna praise you. Just want to praise you. In the corners of my mind, I can't seem to find a reason to believe I could break free now. Down for so long, feel like all hope is gone. But as I lift my hands, I understand to praise you in any circumstance. These shackles off my feet so I can dance. Just wanna praise ya, just gonna praise you, Lord. Broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. Oh, wanna praise ya, just wanna praise ya now. Been through fire and rain, every kind of way. God broke every chain, so let me go right now and say to take these shackles off my feet so I can dance. Just wanna praise you, just wanna praise you, Lord. Broke the chain so I can lift my hands. Just wanna praise you, just wanna praise you. Please join me for the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. As you are able, will, will you please stand for the reading of the gospel? Our New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Listen to the word of the Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, 
we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pablo Diaz once wrote, When things are going well, we feel that all is possible, and our trust and faith in God comes naturally. There's no stopping what we can accomplish. The test is when things aren't going well. These are the times when our trust and faith can be shaken. Negative thoughts can fill our minds and cause us to ask, will God come through for me? Or when we lose control in our lives, our faith is tested. Even worse, when everyone around us has given up on us, we question if God too has given up. Most of us at one time or another have been in this place or have felt this way. These are hard times when we tend to seek God, when we feel we must place our trust in God, where we have little to lose and everything to gain in trusting God with our lives. Perhaps this was how Nicodemus was feel feeling when he came seeking Jesus in the dark of night. Perhaps he was questioning just where he stood with God. Bobby Spencer was a West Virginia coal miner who was hundreds of feet below the surface when the shaft he was working in collapsed. And after the dust settled, Bobby knew that he was trapped and alone. On land above, miners ran mechanical devices to see if there were any survivors, but found none. And after a while, they gave up hope, assumed everyone had died. Bobby felt differently. He was very much alive. He decided that he would start doing what he did best. He dug, and he dug, and he dug. And with bloodied hands, he clawed one rock away at a time. He was hundreds of feet below the earth, and it was dark. His faith and trust in God kept him going until he saw the light that helped him out of the cave. I think Nicodemus, in his own way, was seeking light. He was no ordinary man. He was an educated man, a man of honor, a man of privilege, a religious man with religious convictions. Nicodemus was a man who served on the Sanhedrin, the supreme court, if you will, of Jewish justice and law. He was a Pharisee in Jesus' day, an attorney, a man of authority, and he truly sought to know the will of God. It wasn't an instantaneous moment of conversion, nor was his visit, that, nor was his visit one that happened by chance. Nicodemus' conversation with Jesus took him from a time in his life of seeking God in a new way to wrestling with God and to eventually understanding who God in Jesus, the word of God made flesh, was and is. His journey took him from his encounter with Jesus in darkness to taking a stand on his behalf at his trial, 
to helping Joseph of Arimathea place Jesus' body in a tomb upon his death. He was the one bringing the spices in great abundance for Jesus' burial. Nicodemus, I would like to think, found what he was searching for in the person of Jesus the Christ, even if it was after his death. For the writer of John's Gospel and for many Christians throughout the ages, we know that central message of this text is found in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus says these very words to Nicodemus one night early on in his ministry, but Nicodemus doesn't quite get it. Nicodemus has undoubtedly heard of Jesus. He's heard about his baptism by John the baptizer, has heard of Jesus calling his own disciples, of his turning water into wine at the wedding in Canaan, and more than likely he's heard, maybe even witnessed firsthand, Jesus driving out the money changers out of the temple with a whip of cords. This Jesus has been gaining this odd reputation, and when the news of Jesus reaches the ears of Nicodemus, his curiosity is obviously piqued. Who exactly is this man Jesus? Jesus obviously knows about God. It's obvious that he's gifted spiritually, and people seem to be flocking to him to hear him teach about God and to witness firsthand these signs and wonders that are being attributed to him. But Nicodemus has to move carefully. He has his own reputation to maintain, after all. What would his fellow court justices think if they saw him parked outside of Jesus' house? So in the darkness of night, Nicodemus knocks on Jesus' door, and he's granted an audience and begins the niceties of conversation that intends to compliment Jesus and Jesus' work in the world. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs you do apart from the presence of God. Well, Jesus doesn't return the compliment back to Nicodemus. He doesn't say, well, thank you, Nick. I've heard your good works in the temple as courts as well. No, Jesus assumes the position of authority that Nicodemus has awarded him, that of teacher or rabbi. And with that authority in hand, Jesus begins to speak of godly things, of kingdom things, and the necessity of giving up what we think we know to be true about God in order to receive a greater revelation of God. Jesus tells Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus says, what? That is so not possible. Once one is born, there's no going back in. But Jesus tells him again, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born anew of water and spirit. There are things that are of the earth, of flesh and blood, and there are things that are of a spiritual nature. And it seems that we get too caught up in what we think we know and forget what we need to consider that part of our very lives is spiritual in nature. The Spirit of God moves like the wind at times. Jesus asks Nicodemus, how do you not know this? Aren't you a man of God? Don't you sit on the council? Don't be surprised when I tell you you must be born from above if you want to see the kingdom of God. So there are obviously two different understandings of the word choice being used in this passage. John loves to play with words and multiple meanings, and we can't see it in the English. We can be born anew or we can be born from above. It's the same thing. Uh, It's the same word in the Greek. As Americans, we like to toss around the phrase born again around uh, a lot, like it holds some special place in the Salvation Hall of Fame. But Nicodemus doesn't grasp any of these connotations. Born anew or born from above or even born again to borrow from our culture. He's a black and white kind of guy. He doesn't do well thinking abstractly or spiritually. Or maybe he doesn't hear too well. This conversation Nicodemus is having with Jesus in the middle of the night, it reminds me of this greeting card. Perhaps you've seen it too. There's a group of elderly gentlemen friends who are engaged in a conversation, and one of them says to his friends, isn't this a windy day? And the second friend says, nope, I think it's Thursday. And the third friend chimes in, yeah, I'm thirsty too. Let's go for a beer. Jesus knows who Nicodemus is. He's one of those in religious power. People listen to him. My guess is that he tries his cases fairly or listens to cases fairly based upon what he's been taught of the law and others' interpretations of the law. 
Nicodemus, however, has come to realize with Jesus on the scene that perhaps not everything is as it seems. Perhaps what he has known as truth is somehow flawed. Why else would this Jesus person be gaining such an attention in such a short amount of time? Jesus tries his best to help Nicodemus understand that perhaps his understanding of how the law has been wielded in the past is not necessarily the way that God intended it to be used in the first place. The law was a gift to the people to help them live at peace with one another, to help us live in peace with one another. And somehow, somewhere along the way, the law became an end unto itself and not a pathway for peace and justice and a means of living fully in relationship with God and with one another. Jesus says no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Jesus reminds Nicodemus of that crazy staff that Moses used in the desert to save people from the venomous snake bites. And when the staff was raised, the people were saved from death. In a like manner, when the Son of Man is lifted on the cross, this is the means of our salvation. And we hear the words of John 3.16 as the conversation with Nicodemus comes to a close. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. God loves us. It's hard to fathom sometimes, or maybe most times, yet God loves us so much that God goes to extraordinary lengths to show us this very fact. God in Jesus Christ is willing to go to the cross that we might gain a glimpse into the height and the depth and the length and the width of that love. And so what about the times when we seem distant from God, when we wonder if God really does love us for who we are? Do we desire to seek God in troubling times when things do not appear as they should be? Do we put our whole faith and trust in God and God's unconditional love for us? A few years ago, I saw a film clip of a waitress in Amarillo, Jordan Smith, who talked about being raised in a large family which everyone went to the same church. And she had attended this church from her birth and became active in its youth group up until around the eighth grade when her family was asked to leave the church. Now, I don't know the side story. She didn't tell it, but this had an impact on her life. She walked away from church and from her relationship with God. And she obviously had faith issues about the church. As a teenager, she began seeking joy and approval through partying with older friends. And yet there was this deep void that haunted her well into her college years. And one night as she was waiting tables in Amarillo, a couple leaves the restaurant, leaving a pin behind in which they had signed their check. And she put it in her apron and she's presenting a bill to another table, with that very same pin. And they asked her if that was the church that she went to. The pin was one from a church. Jordan responded, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> And in that moment, the couple started talking about where they went to church and how much they liked it, and they invited her to come. It was as simple as that. Jordan had been missing out on a relationship with God throughout her adolescent years, and with that one invitation, that one conversation with strangers, something in her heart changed. She felt the need to return to church, found the strength to walk in the door, and over time ended up becoming active in that church. She was baptized in that church, and now she shares her testimony of finding her way back into relationship with God through her new church home. Friends, perhaps there is a void in your life that can only be filled with the love of God, and if that is true for you, I would invite you to turn to the Lord in prayer. Speak of your heart's desire to be healed, to be renewed, to be loved again. And now imagine with me, if you will, that there are many others beyond these walls who do not know God, who are hurting and lost, and perhaps they don't even realize that they are seeking God. Don't be shy about extending an invitation to come to church. It might be the one conversation that draws them closer to God. Nicodemus, a religious man with authority and privilege, realized he was missing something from his life. He was seeking more from life. And he saw something in Jesus that made him question his understanding of Jewish law and tradition. And thank goodness Jesus welcomed him into relationship and began planting the seeds of what living into the kingdom of God is all about. Nicodemus, even in all of his confusion, came away from the experience a changed man. 
a man who saw the mighty power of God in and through a simple Jewish rabbi who had some things to say about living life in relationship with God in God's kingdom. And so may it be that we who seek God too come away from our searching as changed persons in ways that give glory and honor to Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, Above all wisdom and all the ways of man You were here before the world began Above all kingdoms, above all thrones Above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified, laid behind the stone Lived to die, rejected took the fall and thought of me above all, above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things. all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all thrones above all wonders the world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified, laid behind the stone You live to die, rejected the fall and thought of me above all crucified lay behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on took the fall and thought of me above all like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all Thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray our time together has been a blessing to you. Please remember to like this recorded worship service on Facebook or YouTube and share this with your friends. This is how we are growing our online community of faith. A reminder that we have resumed in-person 
indoor worship at 10 a.m. each Sunday. We practice safe distancing protocols such as the wearing of face masks, temperature checks, and seating that is spread apart. Our Sunday school class meets at 1 p.m. each Sunday via Zoom. Please contact the church office at 512-303-1393 for the meeting details. Vacation Bible School Knights of the North Castle will be July 12th through 14th from 6.15 to 7.45 p.m. Watch your emails for registration details. Our food pantry is open on the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month from 9 to noon. Mark your calendars for the next distribution on June 9th. If you or someone you know is in need of groceries, please extend the invitation to stop by. Our cupboards are full. Thank you for all who hold Cedar Creek with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. If you would like to give to Cedar Creek United Methodist Church financially, you may do so electronically via our website at cedarcreekumc.org, or you may mail a check to the office at P.O. Box 33. Cedar Creek, Texas, 78612. Remember that there are fees involved in online giving for which you are responsible. Your offerings support the mission and ministries of the church and are greatly appreciated. Know we are praying for you, and I hope you are praying for Cedar Creek UMC as well. Now, receive this blessing as we say goodbye. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and always. Amen.